Hey everyone, welcome back to Brave Souls. Uh, last week I took a much needed break, but I am ready. I'm back for more guests. Um, but tonight's guest, uh, the lovely Megan Keith. She is a uh, co-founder of Adoptees of South America right here on Instagram. So Megan, when you're ready to um, come on, request, and we will get started shortly. Oh, here she is. We'll get started any second. Okay, I'm going with Megan right now. Hey, oh, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm so sorry for it to be late. I never had internet no issues. Worries. I know, and no worries. It, out of nowhere tonight so i'm like i'm trying then i switched over to my phone i was still getting yeah. the same message oh really yeah it was really really weird no <laughs> so hopefully knock on wood we'll be okay yeah um welcome hi raya zim fam hello welcome how are you doing today i'm doing good um long day it's only tuesday <laughs> i know but we're getting there <laughs> i know i know it's not good when it starts off the week early and it's i know the long week so far yeah okay. hi Bethany Karen hello I'm just gonna give it um just a little yeah. bit for people to come on sounds good how's your week going oh uh, good so far yeah yeah nice. right now I can't complain it's just been pretty uh it's been really cold here it snowed mm. same and I think we're supposed to have more where are you again? Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in Massachusetts. It snowed oh, okay. last week. It snowed today. I think it's supposed to snow later on this week. Yeah. Lots of snow. We're going to get, yeah, we're going to get hit with lots of snow soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, Brianna. Hi, Danielle. Um, Philber Sal. Hello. I'm sorry if I'm butchering any of these names. Um, <laughs> Palmita. Palmita. Welcome, adoptee to adoption worker. Hello. Oh, there's my cousin. Hi, Sam. Oh. <laughs> Hello, welcome. I said your last name, right, Keith? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Good, yeah. good. Nice. So what do you have going on for the rest of the week? Um, I have classes on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then Friday is pretty much free. I have my internship for a few hours, and then I get to do, I spend normally doing homework. Okay. Um, so yeah, what do you go to busy. school for? I'm getting my master's in social work right now. Oh, that's all right. Very nice. Yeah. Very impressive. Thank you. Hi, Jim. Hi, Yana. Welcome, everyone. My dog's literally circling me back and forth. Really? Yeah. I know. I kicked my animals out of my room. I shut the door so the cats can't come in. See, cats probably are easier, but my dog, if I put him upstairs, he'll cry. He'll cry. And I have to leave to go let him down. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got my master's in social work. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, Yana, I'm so glad you're here. Usually Yana is not able to join. Oh, really? Yeah. I th I'm not quite sure the time difference, but mm. I think it's really late where she is where is she do you know i'm not sure yana where are you oh yeah i forgot we can ask yeah <laughs> can you see the comments yes i can okay okay yes. welcome oh there's my best friend hi larissa welcome larissa <laughs> so funny. Florida. It's probably warm in Florida. Oh, I wish I could be in Florida right now. Me too. Hi, Tina. Welcome. Okay, so she's in the Netherlands. It's 1 a.m. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thank you for that staying up really and watching. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, with love. So, welcome. 
Every time I think I'm going to say, okay, we'll start, I see more and, uh, people. More people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do lives you, um, with, what, a butter, is it a Butterfly Kisses? Yes, or? Maria. Yep, she's Maria. the other co-founder of our group. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot more this month, actually. So Nice. Very nice. Okay. I think we'll start. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, so for anyone who joins in late or can't join at all, I always save the lives to my page right after so they can go back anytime and watch it or rewatch it. Um, Megan, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on with me and thank you for sharing your story. Well, you haven't shared it yet, but for <laughs> so thank you. We'll <laughs> Hi, third world problem. Hello. Hey, um, so I usually, I just let my guests take the wheel. So, um, share your story with us tell us a little bit of your backstory and everything and okay. we'll go from there um i'm my owl sorry i get distracted by the comments um so hey everybody my name is megan i am 24 years old i'm currently living in massachusetts i was adopted from ecuador south america in 1996 um i was adopted as an infant i always forget how many months exactly i was i think i was around three months old when i was adopted um, I was placed with a foster family for a few weeks after I was born. Um, it was actually an American foster family that was living in Ecuador at that time. They were in the military. Um, I've actually been in contact with them last year for the first time since I was little. Okay. Um, yes. And so I was with them for about three weeks. And then my adoptive parents came to Ecuador to pick me up. Um, they stayed for a few weeks while kind of like the legal process was going through. Okay. And they were actually able to meet my birth mother when they came, which is something that's not very common. Um, they actually took a few pictures with her as well. So I've had those while I was growing up. Oh, and those nice. are what helped me to be in reunion in 2018. Um, so yeah, I guess growing up. So I grew up in a predominantly white area, as a lot of transracial adoptees do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still in the same town, actually. So growing up, I struggled with looking different. Mm -hmm. That's something I've talked about on my page a few times right. as well as it's a common thing in our group that we talk about my adoptees of south america group that i co-created um what else i never know like when people ask me to share my story i'm like what do i share there's so much involved um <laughs> tell me whatever you want to tell us yeah um so so i grew up with two sisters my sisters here are my biological parents children um they're twins so they're two years younger than me so they're 22 i think Okay. Not good with ages, um, <laughs> but we grew up super close. Um, I grew up very close to my adoptive family. I still live with them, actually, while I'm in okay. school. Um, yeah, what else? I got into reunion with my birth mother and father in June of 2018. Okay. I started my search in high school, I started, and it was a long process. I tried a few different things, um, and then I finally found them using hey maria hey everybody hey, maria. Um, hey kirsten krista what was i saying i found the oh i found my birth family using the photos that my adoptive parents actually took with them when they adopted okay. me in ecuador um did you have any other information on your birth family other than just the um pictures no so my adoption was closed which is interesting okay. why i don't really get why they took a picture the lawyer let that happen for some reason i'm mm -hmm. thankful they did because that's what helped me ultimately um, but so like their names were deleted from my birth certificate. I only had like a specific town that I was born in. Um, and I think that was it on my birth certificates. Um, and my date, my birth date, obviously. Um, okay. But yeah. So you are in reunion with both of your birth parents, correct? Yes, I am. Yep. So share a little bit about um, each of your birth parents, you know, what it yeah. was like to, you know, discover them. Mm -hmm. to you know contact them but you know their reactions you know mm. just just everything about it basically yeah so I started my search in high school I tried a few different things I tried going through my adoption agency here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I tried like requesting my file to see if there was anything I was missing anything I didn't have that didn't go anywhere um, I actually got in contact with my lawyer in Ecuador who did my adoption as well mm -hmm. um, that was in high school he claims that he didn't remember anything and he didn't have any paperwork or anything. Um, so that was another dead end. And okay. then ultimately I ended up doing ancestry. And as soon as I like connected with different relatives, the closest I got was like fourth to sixth cousins, I think. 
So it was super far down that I was messaging everybody that I connected with, basically sharing all the information that I had. I was sending them my pictures as well. And that's what really helped me um, yeah. locate them. But after I'd searched for so long, I kind of was giving up hope. I didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then randomly one day somebody was looking at the pictures and they mentioned that there was a school logo on a piece of clothing that my family was wearing. Oh. Um, so then that brought them to the town. They went searching and they found her. I think that was like within a week of when I was doing the actual ancestry, reaching out to everybody. So I went from very slow to super fast and like... Okay. I don't know. It was, felt really weird because I was it was taking so long and I was getting nowhere. Um, I know. I'm, I was in a similar situation. I, yeah. I mean, I technically started in 2002, but lately 2006. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't okay. until 2011 is when I found my fam my birth family. Yeah. I mean, within three weeks of like mm -hmm. when I hired the private investigator in yeah. Romania, three weeks I got a phone call and I'm just oh like, goodness. where were you my whole life? Yeah, I know. It's crazy how that happens. Yeah, you start to lose hope. I did. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I used to like constantly like keep the phone next to me. I'm like, yep. okay, I check, kept checking my emails. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, is my phone okay? Is it broke? Yeah, um, I know, right? And, um, <laughs> but yeah, like as soon as like you start to like a little lose hope, mm -hmm. I got the call. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how that works. Um, but so yeah, I did that. I found them. And then I believe the next morning or the next day I was going to do like a video call on Facebook with my birth mom okay um so we did that and I was super nervous um yeah. I wasn't I can honestly say I was not prepared to be in reunion I don't think that I could have I'm not sure that I would ever be prepared for kind of what it brought or what it still brings today even three years later mm -hmm. um but and they also speak Spanish only they don't speak that English. was gonna be my next question yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so at that time I honestly I'd taken like Spanish growing up in school but I never really committed to it or really fully understood it mm -hmm. so at that point I really couldn't say anything and also I was in like so much shock that I didn't really know what to say it was so strange like over a screen meeting my birth mom yeah. did um, you have trouble understanding you know parts of the conversation or yeah so I don't I don't, it's so strange because looking back, I don't remember too much. Mm -hmm. And that could either be because one, I, I do have a really bad memory, but I also think it's very um, emotional, these things that yeah. I experienced. So I, I kind of, I don't know, I'm not sure if I like blocked it out or if I just don't remember, but I'm sure we struggled speaking. Um, I okay. believe I had called my aunt who speaks Spanish, who lives in Florida over the phone and she tried to translate a little bit, but that was even harder as well because yeah. so many different parties going on and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, and isn't so there like an, you know issues too with like different dialects as well? Like, yeah, that's true. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, so that was hard. Um, yeah. But so we did the video chat, and then we basically communicated, or we still do communicate through WhatsApp. Um, okay. That's been like a lifesaver for me. That's how we yeah. communicate every day. Um, okay. So that was in June of 2018 when I first met her. Okay. At that point, she was going to tell my birth father about me finding them. Um, and at so that she point, knows then, your birth father then? Yes, she did. Yes. Are they together or they, or she just still talks to him? No, they're not together. Um, they don't really, t they don't talk either. Um, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, but so she told me she was going to have to let him know. Um, so she did do that. It took a while. I think it took about a month or so. Mm-hmm. For my birth father to actually reach out to me um okay. so like that waiting period was it seemed like forever for me especially yeah. after taking so long I finally found them I was like hello what was there. that like when you heard from him <laughs> yeah it was interesting I think it's for me I always grew up wanting to know my birth father specifically and I knew that I needed to have that connection mm -hmm. and I would here and there think about my birth father but I never really placed too much importance on it for some reason not really sure why but so when I did finally get in contact with him it was very strange I would say um mm -hmm. but the funny thing is we literally we look like twins so I get my features from him and I okay. don't really look like my birth mom so that was like a shock when I saw him I was like wow I finally know who I look like yeah. um but yeah so I that was in June of 2018 and then 
in November. I was also in school at that time as well. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't um, visit them right away, which I wanted to do. So I had to wait until November. I think it was a school break, like a long weekend. It was only four days that I went to Ecuador for the first time to meet them. So it was super fast. Yeah. Very So overwhelming. you traveled alone to Ecuador or did you go with anyone else? No. So that time that I first went back to meet them, I went with my adoptive parents, both my mom and my dad. So they came okay. with me. It was just us three. That was nice. super special. I'm really glad that they came with me. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they were, they were supportive for you at yeah, that time. Yeah. Yeah. My parents have always been supportive in me locating my birth family. Mm -hmm. um, so for them to come, it was really like, I don't know. It was really, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. For sure. So what was that like? So you, uh, when you and your parents went over there um, to meet your birth parents, who did you meet first or did you meet them both together? No. So I had met my birth mother first and her side of the family. So my three okay. aunts, my grandmother, a lot of cousins. I also met my half brother from her side as well. Okay. So that was awesome. I always grew up wanting to have a brother. So when I yeah. found out about him, that was just awesome. Um, so I met them first. And then, so my birth parents are not together. My dad mm -hmm. is married. So we met separately. Okay. I went to his house to meet his side of the family afterwards, and his okay. family is huge. There's 10 siblings total. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot bigger than my birth mom's side of the family, yeah. so I met all of them. That might have been overwhelming to, like, start off it with, was. like, a big family, like, the first yeah. yeah, yeah, especially because, so me and my adopted parents, we, like, pulled up in the car to the house. And I was super nervous and we go inside and like the whole family's like lined up around the like oh, living no. room and it was so intimidating. <laughs> it was scary, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I would be scared too. I would just probably yeah. like turn right back around and go back in the car. That's what I wanted to do. It was, yeah. it was overwhelming for sure. I think yeah. just that amount of people in general can be overwhelming for me. Never mind, They're all like blood related to me and I've never, mm -hmm. I talked to them a little bit before I came um, and most of them are excited. Some of them weren't there. They weren't interested in meeting me at that time. Um, but yeah. So when you met your birth mother, what um, what did you feel at first when you first, I guess, saw her face to face? Yeah. So when I first saw her, I, so when I first arrived in the town where she lived in, we had planned to meet at the hotel that I was staying at. And for some reason there was, they have a lot of parades and like parties in Ecuador. So at that time, there was one and I could not get to the hotel. I was so close to where she was, oh, okay. but I could not get there. Like the roads were blocked off. It was crazy. I felt like I was in a movie. <laughs> so then I finally got there and my birth mom, she like came into the hotel and I saw her and I, I automatically started crying. I don't, it was just, I've always felt like I had a connection to her, even though I wasn't in communication with her for so long. And like I kind of mentioned before, like that was always my goal and like my priority to meet her. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I saw her, I was like, I just didn't think it was real. It felt, again, like a movie. I make that comparison a lot because. No, it does it though. I, I mean, it, I, I say the same thing, like things didn't feel real when mm -hmm. I was doing it. So I just like, I kind of like stopped, you know, I pretended like it, like I was like, okay, this isn't yeah. real. I don't believe it. You're mm -hmm. making this up, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, it's a surreal experience for sure. It definitely is. Um, did you guys like hug? What like, or did you like shake your hand, like hands? Or yeah, anything? so we hugged. I'm, I'm a hugger. I don't really like shaking hands. Yeah. Um, but so when I met her, she, we both hugged each other. Um, my birth mother is not a very emotional person. She's had a really difficult life, so she really has a wall built up. Um, mm -hmm. but when we did meet, we hugged. I, Actually, my adoptive mom was filming me when we first met everybody. I've shared that on my page a few times. So I have I a have video. I have to go of back and watch that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I have that video of us hugging, me meeting all my um, other relatives, hugging, crying. There was a lot of crying. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how is it on your, um, your adoptive family's end? Because I'm sure that could be a little difficult for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah. was there any, like, awkwardness between, you know, both sets? parents and... yeah um I think a lot of the awkwardness just has to do or a big part of it has to do with the language so again my adoptive parents don't speak any Spanish at all um and my birth parents don't speak any English so it's very hard for them to even like say a sentence to each other 
So there's pretty, there was pretty much no communication. I did have a translator with me. That was going to be, yeah, I was going to ask you that. Did you have a translator? That was key. (laughs) That was like super important. She was with me and I grew super close to her after that because she was like a lifesaver for that whole trip. Nice. But yeah, I think that had to do the most with it being a little bit awkward. But again, I did speak to my adoptive parents afterwards and it can definitely be hard. Um, yeah. for adoptive parents or anybody it would be of hard course. to see that but they were happy for me so I think it kind of evens out good and um and then same thing with your birth father like is he is he like a huggable emotional person or yeah so so my birth father when I met him kind of long story short my birth parents my dad was married when he was with my mother and when I was conceived so it was always a very like difficult situation um so when I did like I mentioned before it took him a little while to actually reach out to me I think he was a little scared of like the consequences of his actions 20 yeah 22 years later um so our communication was a little bit limited before I had went there um he had wanted things like a DNA test things like that kind of just to confirm everything um we didn't end up doing that but it definitely wasn't as open and welcoming as my birth mother was and I think that just has to do with she's the one that gave birth to me so exactly yeah Yeah. she can't get out of that one (laughs) yeah exactly yeah um but so when I met him I don't remember if we hugged I don't think we hugged initially I know by the end of the meeting we were hugging and crying each other crying with each other but at first it was awkward um it was very plus you said you look like a spitting image of him yeah yeah so when he saw me he really couldn't deny that I was his daughter. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. funny. Um, how mm-hmm. long did you visit there? What for? I think I was there for maybe a few hours. Um, we kind of just sat around the living room. He ended up giving me like a big picture of his family. So like all my aunts and uncles, my cousins. He actually put me in the picture frame. So that made me really feel really special Aww, as well. So yeah. So we kind of just shared a little bit about each other's lives through the translator there Mm -hmm. Um, and then afterwards they kind of showed me around where they lived Um, Mm -hmm. we actually went to go visit the cemetery so I have a half sister from his side um, and she unfortunately passed away two years before I found them so yeah and I didn't know that so when I got there he was like okay let's go to the cemetery and I was like what I'm not prepared to for this Um, did you know so that was the first time you found out mm -hmm. okay yeah, so oh. we ended up going to the cemetery with some of my relatives. My grandfather, my uncle was there. And that was super emotional because, I don't know, I wasn't expecting, like I said, I didn't really plan for this to happen. So Right, well, you don't go visit someone yeah. and then you're asked to go, okay, yeah. let's go to a cemetery. <laughs> yeah, I think it was yeah. like a very special moment. And I'm glad that they included me in it because yeah. it kind of signaled to me that they do consider me family. But it was hard. I just remember like crying yeah. while I was there. Um Kind of just, I didn't have like emotions on top of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Again, still feels like a movie. Uh, Wow. (laughs) Um, So you did visit again to Ecuador? Yes. So I went again in August of 2019. So -hmm. it's been hard for me to travel just because of school and everything. And COVID and all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I was able to go in August of 2019. That time I went for... 10 days so it was a much longer trip okay. I went with my Did adopted mom oh. nope. I went with my adopted mom and my sister actually oh okay and that was awesome that my sister came I really appreciated that um, yeah so we went and again it was I didn't I had the translator with me for the first few days and then she had to go back to like her own life okay. um so it was a little hard once I am there and I'm forced to speak English I mean Spanish I can do it. I just Mm -hmm. don't prefer to do it. Yeah, it's hard. But I'm learning. I'm trying to be more fluent. Um, But that trip, we kind of just went around. They took me to a lot of different places to see different, like, tourist attractions. Um, I had to split my time, again, between my birth mom and my birth dad. So that was a little hard, kind of, trying to, like, manage that. Yeah. Um, But that was the last time I was able to go, unfortunately, due to COVID. I was supposed to go this past summer. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, But I wasn't able to. I also wanted to go when I graduate in May. But I still don't think that's going to happen. So it's going to be a little while Mm -hmm. until I can go back. But yeah, I'm kind of used to it, honestly. I I grew up this way without them. So as sad as that sounds, I just... No, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I want to circle back then to, I guess, yeah. um, growing up. So obviously your parent, your adoptive parents are very supportive yes. um, with everything. And obviously you knew from day one that you were yeah. adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, so they gave you the safe place to talk and ask questions and not feel ashamed. And mm-hmm. it was a very mm-hmm. open conversation in, that, in your household. Yep. They did give me that space. The So that I'm very grateful for because they did give me the space. It's more of me personally I struggle with kind of talking about it with other people right specifically people that are not adopted because sometimes we just I remember you and I had this conversation yeah. before about that yeah sometimes we're just not on the same page um so yeah so they did absolutely give me that space it was more me that I struggled with kind of being yeah. open about it and talking with it okay mm-hmm. um so what else anything else you want to share um regarding your adoption or anything um yeah um so me and maria my friend maria she was on here a little bit earlier um her instagram is a butterfly series we actually we met in june of last year through a different adoptee group online so we met for the first time and i've never really come across other ecuadorian adoptees in groups i've been a part of groups for a little while now Mm -hmm. So when I saw her, we, like, instantly connected. Um, And she had asked me, she was kind of planning, oh, love you too. Um, She was kind of planning starting a group for South American adoptees. Um, So she asked me if I kind of wanted to join in with her. And that was really amazing for me because I've always wanted to do something like that, but I never really, I don't know. I feel like that's a really big responsibility for one person. Um, So she asked me, and I instantly loved the idea. So we started Adoptees of South America and Extended Latin Americas in August last year. We had our first group, um, and that was amazing just to have a space with so many people who Mm -hmm. have similar experiences. We all, of course, have different journeys and different stories, but we were just able to relate on so many things. Mm -hmm. So that has been, like, one of my main priorities recently focusing on that group and really highlighting the adoptees in our group. Um, We hold monthly Zoom calls for anybody who is interested in that. Um, We've just built a really supportive community, and it's just been, it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, I can't even, like, say how much, like, I love the adoptee community. I know. And I said this, you know, and everyone else basically says the same thing, but we never even knew they existed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Up until, um, I think, last year. Yeah. Before July, I, I mean, when I started the page, I didn't even know there was actually communities out there. And I was just I like, oh, my gosh. Like, you meet one person, and then you end up, like, meeting 50 others so yeah. quickly. And it's um, it's That's amazing. And I love how everyone, even though, you know, we have a Dobby community, but everyone focused on different. Like you said, you mm-hmm. uh, focus on, like, with, like, um, Dobby of South America. I have Bethany on here, yeah. who's a co-founder of mm-hmm. group, um, uh Ah, Kumonekta Kapwa, mm-hmm. which focuses on Philippine uh, community. So it's like, yep. I love how like they all focus on different, um, yeah. you know, ethnicities and just, you know, educate and bring, mm-hmm. you know, talk about their culture and all. And mm-hmm. I love that. I know, it's awesome. I, yeah. think, I think one of the good things that kind of came out of the pandemic is just there's been so much connection in the adoptee community. Yeah. Um, specifically online. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many of us all around the place. Like you said, somebody's from the Netherlands there's people everywhere so I think just having the space online has been huge yeah it definitely and I really do think maybe the pandemic had a lot to do with it because Mm -hmm. you had a lot of free time yeah um and then you just I guess you were just more on social media and Mm -hmm. that's I mean I don't really think that I probably wouldn't have maybe connected with honestly I don't even think I would have created baby be brave if it wasn't the pandemic and I wouldn't have met everyone so um Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bethany said, Megan, your group inspired okay. us at, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to read some comments because yeah. I don't like to um, ignore anyone, but I don't want to um, interrupt you while you're talking either. Yeah. Um, Good. So, oh, so Bethany did say that. So uh, lucky that you got pictures. Absolutely. Um, you saw Love You, Megan. That's so, Yana said, that's so amazing that your adopted uh, family gives you space. And that's mm-hmm. a lot of that you struggle with is they're not giving that safe space to talk mm-hmm. about it or share or show how they really feel mm-hmm. um and yeah, that's I'm everything from your adoptive parents is 
you know, I, I always say everything starts at home. Mm-hmm. And yeah, with it this, does. it really does. Because, does. you know, if you can't, you're not given a safe place to talk where you're like your sanctuary, your home, mm-hmm. where you feel safe. Where else can you talk about it? Yeah. Very or true. you feel ashamed to talk about it because you can't talk about it here. So maybe there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Jim said, I uh, it took him 57 years of not knowing other adoptees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Long time. Long time. Long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as we're wrapping up, um, I usually, if, is there anything else that you, we didn't get to that you want to share before I ask my two uh, questions? I don't think so. I guess one thing I wanted to share, so I am getting my master's in social work. Yeah. So I am planning when I graduate, um, working specifically with adoptees. So I want to, I'm in the process, I'm graduating soon in May, so Mm -hmm. my time's coming up, and one of the things I've noticed is, so I want to do post-adoption counseling with adoptees, Mm -hmm. and that's something that really lacks where I am, so in Massachusetts, there's not a lot of opportunities or places that do provide that, Mm -hmm. so that's something I'm hoping eventually with, um, with time in my career and some experience, kind of trying to create something. So kind of like me and Maria created the space online. I kind of want to create a space in person for this community because it's something that's really lacking. So I'm hoping to be able to do that one day. That's That's like my main goal. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. amazing. I love that. Just thank you. I love where, like like you said, like we're places that aren't, um, that don't have like that kind of help. You want to Mm -hmm. provide that. And that's exactly what everyone needs. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm so excited for you, and I cannot wait for it to happen. Thank you. Um, You have to let us all know, of course. I will. Um, Your story is so inspiring, and your work is helping us all go through this journey. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Good luck with your studies. Yana, thank you so much for staying up so late and joining (laughs) in. I know. That's awesome. Uh, Go to sleep, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, wow, that's incredible. Um, Okay, so... So um, my last two questions, uh, what advice would you give adoptees and what advice would you give to adoptive parents? Mm, Those are good questions. I think my biggest piece of advice for adoptees is just finding a place in this community. There's so many different groups and different pages and different everything. We're pretty Mm -hmm. much, we're really growing. So I think there really is an opportunity and space for every adoptee. Um, And I just think having this community, and specifically me, I didn't grow up with it. I know a lot of other adoptees didn't grow up with it. So now it's just really been like an empowering space to feel heard and feel seen and just be connected with others. So I think that that can be really helpful in your journey. So, Mm -hmm. Um, And then for adoptive parents, um, I don't know. That's a good question. I get asked that question a lot. And I think for me, being a transracial adoptee, Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a white family, I think, in white spaces predominantly. I think the biggest thing is kind of making sure your children's culture isn't lost. And like, Mm -hmm. so I didn't grow up speaking Spanish. I didn't grow up eating the food, celebrating the holidays. Um, I did do a few things here and there, but really incorporating that into daily life is huge. When you're adopted, like, your whole identity is not just lost. It's not something that just goes away. It's something that really needs to be like nurtured. So I would say that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's great advice. Thank you. Well, everyone, thank you for joining on and showing Megan your love and support. Um, I will be back um, next week with another episode. Um, and Tina, yes, I would agree. I have a strong Mexican Mexican heritage that was not mm. celebrated. Yeah, that, yep. that's a shame. I'm sorry. Um, okay, well, everyone, thank you. Um, Megan, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and being mm-hmm. brave. And um, continue just doing the amazing work you're doing. Thank you for having me. The I world needs it. more people like you. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a wonderful night and, and a uh, wonderful rest of your week. Bye. Bye. Bye.